on this computer. And I think who has the first part? Andre, go ahead. One second, just waiting for this load, load up. All right, so we had our, our front end UX call this week and a designer from another product area raised this issue and I just wanted to make sure if this is an issue for plan. And his point was, as soon as the discussion starts on issues before the cycle, um, UX designers usually get assigned and they get to start discussing that. And there is kind of like a space in time where there are implicit assignments for support engineers or product. So the product manager is not usually assigned to the issue. The front end engineering manager and the back end engineering manager are not usually assigned to the issue, but they are supposed to be there for answering any questions that there might be, right? And he was saying that, this is for Dimitri, by the way. Um, he was saying that sometimes he feels like that lack of explicit assignment um, leaves a little bit of confusion of who to ask about front end issues or back end issues or something like that. And he was wondering if we could find a way around and, and actually start assigning engineers from the get go. And what I told him is that, I mean, there are certain areas in, in the product that, I mean, if it's portfolio management, I can assign to, to Kushal right away so that he can like answer but other areas are a little bit more loose. And unless we get to close to the beginning of the cycle, do we get visibility on who's gonna get the issue? But until then, we, the managers, are supposed to be there for answering. So those are what we call, what I call implicit assignments, which will be the, the, front, the engineering managers and the product manager are implicit assignments. But to my question to everyone, especially to the designers on the call is, do you feel that this is an issue in plan and should we change our behavior? Because up until now, we only assign the engineers when they're doing, when we're doing the assignments in the beginning of the cycle. But do you think we should revise this? Do you feel the need to clarify who's the engineering manager answering those questions? Uh, it's a shame Pedro's not talking because I'm still kind of new to UX, so I don't really have an opinion on this. I haven't noticed anything, but. Right. So my, my, my feeling is that from plan, everything is being going smoothly because I've been being on issues and Pedro knows and you know that I'm, I'm usually answering those questions. If, if, if for its worth, whatever, if we don't change anything, at least we have this moment to clarify that any engineering questions should go to the engineering managers before there is an assignment. Everyone agrees with that? Yeah, I, I, yes. th I think I wrote to my uh, opinion on the doc, but I'm not sure if it's synced because I was on yeah. the train. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so I, I don't think we need to change anything. I think it's working okay. pretty well. Um, yes, so, so I think it's it's a moment for us to, to share what, the way that we work in, in plan and if it's working, maybe other teams can uh, do the same. So, yeah, but thanks for raising it anyway. You're welcome. Pedro, you have the next call, the next point. Yeah, I think it was uh, about some uh, possible questions regarding the design of the filter of uh, issue boards. Uh, so right now you cannot filter issue boards, you just have the long drop down with all of the, the current boards in the group or project. And, uh, and yeah, this, this was motivated by Victor uh, maybe having some questions or I don't know, if I think it's also a good time for, um, in this case, I think it's only you, Andre, front end here. I don't think we have anyone from back end. But Oops, sorry. Yeah, uh, are you uh, hearing me okay? Yeah, I heard you, I heard you clear. So I, I've already I had a look. I haven't actually uh, put a weight on it. Uh, Victor already pinged me, but I'm a little, uh, have a bit of a backlog on my to-dos. Uh, I'm trying to clear everything for the batch comments. But uh, I will be starting looking at particular weights uh, starting next Monday. Um, so we'll be putting a weight, but I can tell you right away that I don't see any issue right there because it's, it's basically just filtering what we have on the list. Um, eventually we might need to do some rewriting. Uh, I don't expect to have like huge refactoring to do. Um, but it's in terms of UI, it, it makes a lot of sense and in terms, in terms of iteration and, um, I'll be able to weigh it, weigh it more precisely, uh, next Monday, if that's okay with you. Yeah, for, for, for me, it's fine. Uh, Victor. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I think, um, what there, there was a discussion 
Mm -hmm. for, for, for Pedro and Annabelle, there was a discussion on, um, on what we're trying to achieve here. And um, I'll give you my uh, frustration with using the board navigation, which is when I go to a board, um, I want to look at plan things. And I know that there's a plan board um, somewhere in that drop down. And since it's alphabetical, I can scroll pretty well and I know my alphabet you know, pretty well. And I can eventually get to the plan area and then I see plan back end, plan back end, next release. And so there's like, you know, six there. And so from there, I can immediately go, okay, no, I'm looking for the plan per milestone because I, I created that previously. I know that's there. Probably somebody didn't delete it. So I'm going to go and click on that. So that's, that's what I want to do. Or, or that's what I'm frustrated at when I'm going to GitLab.org um, Chevron issue boards. And so, so that's my particular problem and how I solve it currently. And I think, um, I, I, I think that's a problem that other people share. Um, but uh, maybe since we have other people on the call, do you share the same problem or do you have a different problem when navigating uh, or, or just in general when trying to access a board? I share the same problem. I, yeah. I would only add, I would only add that eventually the star the star boards will solve it more permanently though because I I have like four or five boards that I go to frequently right if I have those starred I would never use the filter anymore that was only the only thing I wanted to add right and so I um originally we had a discussion um, with two features um, and I, I didn't want to bias the conversation so so I wanted to state the problem first but. The two features were, were pinning the board, starting the board, whatever, and search as Pedro has it here. And then uh, Pedro provided a third uh, feature, which is um, recent boards. And so um, I, uh, I, I, for, for the problem that I described exactly what Andre said, like I would use the pin boards because I wouldn't want to every time go there and, and type plan, the words plan, and then wait for it to filter and then click on it. Um, I would want to, see the you know three pin boards that I use often and then I just click on it. Um, I think recent boards is a little slicker in that you don't even have to do the pinning. It's it's less control obviously because um, if you every now and then you know look at a different board then you may lose it from your recent history. So um, I I'm more partial right now to uh, the viewing the recent one but I think that searching is, is, should be lower priority. Um, and uh, if it's really easy to do, which I hope it is because it's a front end thing, I think it's worth it to do. But I think the higher priority to address at least the problem I, I have would be to do either recent or pinning. So I'll stop there and let Pedro respond or others respond to that. Yeah, I, I thank you for uh, not, uh uh, try, trying to influence <laughs> Annabelle and, and uh, Andre on this. But uh, yeah, because we had a long discussion, uh, healthy uh, but long discussion on, on the priority of these two um, problems that are two different problems but related problems. Um, so the too long didn't read is that the filter helps uh, people navigate uh, when they have a lot of boards. Uh, and they want to access uh, a board that they know exists. And the pinning or recent, so the recent takes away a bit of the control, but still uh, has what you could say a list of maybe the most uh, accessed boards because uh, most people only access, I, I think, a handful of boards. They're not managing like 10 boards at the same time. So maybe the recents uh, as... Victor said is a slicker, slicker way of doing the pinning without any user interaction. And so that uh, recent or pinning or favoriting or whatever you want uh, is uh, the problem of accessing uh, or frequent or accessing boards quickly that you frequently uh, want to uh, see, right? So that's two different problems. Like for someone that uh, just wants to quickly go to a board that they know exists, the filter is good. And I think it's a, a good baseline that covers lots of scenarios. The, um, the pinning is more specific, or pinning or recent is more specific, uh, but, and it solves a related problem. 
I think another thing that we could do, uh, specific now to the, the filtering, that is uh, uh, an issue that I raised regarding the recent, is that if you have an issue, uh, a boards list that only has like two, three, four, five boards, the recents might not make that much sense. And I'm not sure if the search, the filtering also makes sense to have there when you just have five boards. So just a handful of them would, what do you think? Do you think the search makes sense to like occupy that space with the filter box when you just have five boards? I, I, it's, it's not a lot of space. I mean, if you have five boards and the vertical drop down, there, there's space there, I, I assume, right? Um, however long it, it needs to be. So right now it has new board and delete board, which we're trying to fix. And then there's maybe five, seven, or how many, just like the default max number. And so if you add additional search bar, I don't think it's taking a lot of space and it won't be hidden for most cases. So I, I, it's a nice optimization, but I don't think it's, it's super necessary. And it, it's not like horribly confusing if you add that. Um, so that, that's why I think about adding the filter bar. And then um, I, I think I still disagree with you, Pedro, on frequent and on search. Um, we, we can dig into it more, but let, let me say that a couple of things. So frequently used boards is what I want, right? So like I said, in the scenario, I, I want to make, maybe I'm not thinking of the scenario you are, but I want to go to the plan board and that plan board is the board I care about. So it is frequently used. So that is the same. I don't know if that's the same problem, but, but that is, if I go to a board I want, I know about it and it's also frequently used. So the, the recent thing is to me, that solves both problems almost. And then the, the, keep, the thing I keep saying about the, the search bar, which I don't think is, solves the problem as well, is because you have to type, right? You have to type four letters for plan. If you're like on whatever interface, you have to move your hands or whatever. You have to change context. So that, that's why I keep saying that I don't think that's, that's as good. Yeah, um, no, I, I, I... Yeah, I'll, I'll leave one more thing and then I'll let you respond, Pedro, which right. is could we just leave the search there? I don't know if that, that's a good UI, but it's like that you type the word plan and you hit enter, and then that saves it in the search forever. I don't know if that's like, there's probably a rule that says that's a bad idea because then you never know the full list or something, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, okay, so I think, uh, I don't know, I, I think having the search separate or, or uh, something that resets um, is, is, I think it's a more consistent behavior. But the search, uh, so, Responding to your first uh, mm -hmm. point, I think it's, uh, I agree with you. It's a problem I also have that I want to access like the plan board or boards that I frequently want to see. So that, I think that's a, a very specific thing. And so it, it's different. And that's what I'm trying to say is that it's different from searching. Searching does not solve directly the problem of frequently accessing a board. You can bookmark the board. Uh, of course, you have to click and then type uh, the board name. So it's also always a pain if you want to frequently do that. Uh, so it doesn't directly solve that. It slightly alleviates the pain of you having to scroll the long list, but it, not, it does not directly address that problem. The, um, the, the pinning or recents, that's a much better step forward to solving that problem. And, uh, and, and it's a problem that I also have. So... And, but at the same time, as I said, I don't want us to be very uh, biased by our own specific problems because this problem of accessing a board frequently, it's something, it, it's a good problem to have because that means people are using boards a lot. But uh, it's, I, I'm assuming that not a lot of people in the GitLab universe use boards. So searching boards can be, um, can be good for those people as well. And, and then recent is something that uh, helps them when they are already frequently using them. But we, I, th I think the way you scheduled it, and I don't want to 
to, no, it's, it's to, fine. No, I mean, to it's need like, to speak on, on, on milestones. Yeah, but I think the way you scheduled it is like, first we do recent and then we do the filter and I'm, and I'm fine with that. Okay. I don't, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't want to I mean, continue uh, yeah. this little, conversation yeah. longer. I, as long as we do it like in two milestones, I, I'm, I'm happy. Right, right. So, so yeah, I, I agree. Let's not get, let's not debate further. But I, I think we agree that we, we don't want to do PIN for now and we'll do recent and we'll do search. We'll do both um, as you've laid it out. Um, which ones, isn't the search one actually simpler to do, Andre, because there's no backend persistence? Yes, it is simpler. Um, but recent, but the front end for recent would probably be simpler at the same time, would it not be? Because there's in actually terms of, in, terms of, in terms of front end, in terms of front end uh, effort, um let me just think because we uh, have like we're, we're front end constrained right at the same time so that's so that's if, a good point if, yeah yeah so if yeah if it's the recent yeah it's just displaying if it's so that's that's easier than filtering filtering i just checked we we have that in the view component so it would also be very straightforward but still has a bit more, more logic right yeah more logic and we have to update the ui as well but it's we're talking about between a two and a one or between a three okay. and a two Okay. It's very, very low yeah. weight. Okay, then let's, I, yeah, let's, let's just leave it or, or swap. I, I, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, at this point in time, I don't care anymore. Okay. I'm, I'm just happy that we reached a, a that. point of agreement that we, we agree that both solutions are yeah, good. Are, are, are uh, important. Yeah. That, are important. I think that's, that's what, that's okay, what yeah. I, I wanted. Um, uh, so okay. one, one question for you, Andre. Uh, is the filtering... Uh, or do you think the filtering will, uh, do we already load the, the whole list of boards? And if we filter, are we still having to go to the back end to do the filtering? Or as you said, it's only purely front only on, end? Only on, the, only on the front end. So what we'll do, we get the list of every word already, because that's how we're rendering now. Yeah. It's a, few, it's a few components. So basically the text box will just store the filter. And as we're rendering, we just render the ones that match the filter. So it will be fast. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's oh, what yeah, I, I understand. <laughs> yeah, because the instant it's not searching like the label. Instant, yeah. It will be instant. Yeah, it's not okay. like the labels that you have to go and search for fast the labels as your in the computer back. is, not as uh, much as um, internet. <laughs> yeah, there, there's also uh, something that I, I didn't think about, uh, but now, now I'm thinking of it. Um, it is when, when you're searching um, and you have the results, is it possible to um, to shuffle through the the results in the list with the keyboard and press enter or no? Uh, we can discuss the interaction the interaction on the issue, I guess, or on okay. the kickoff. Yeah, that, okay. I think we can just skip the, this point. But I, I okay. we can do whatever we want as long as it's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was just thinking if it was something that we had for free. Uh, uh, so to say, or or not? Okay. I can have uh, a look and we can chat offline uh, after call. Okay. Um, and and lastly, uh, Victor, I think the other thing we should do as soon as possible is uh, persisting the last view uh, of the issue board. So and that will also solve uh, that problem even more specifically. So if you the last time you loaded up the issue board for GitLab.org was on Plan Eleven Four. When you go there again, it will be 11.4. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's, a very, that's an obvious one. Yeah, that's like, yeah. that is the recent. Hmm. Can that is that the recent at the same time, yeah. Then let's just do that and not do recent. <laughs> like, for uh, now, I mean, we'll leave it, but like, for now, I don't think we even need to. Good point. What, what do you think? Pedro? Um, that's even yeah. easier. That's like zero front end work right that's just literally yeah. i that? mean yeah I, I think we should we should do both but if if it's easier to do the the okay, like I'll, loading I'll, loading up and persisting the state right uh, let's do that first then i don't know i don't care if, if which one okay. gets I'll done first an issue and then i'll let you obviously think about it to make sure like there's no gotchas there but let's do <clears> that okay if, if you, yeah, like if everything goes well and then we don't think of any weird edge cases, because that is a pretty big change, right? Like, um, but I can't think of immediately in the, like the last three seconds why it would be a bad change, but I, it is a big change. 
expectation wise, right? If you've been using it for so long. Um, and so then you get a fault. Yeah, that, that you, it, it saves where you were last time. And that's like almost nowhere in GitLab that does that happens, right? If you think about it. But that, that view is also pretty unique or that UI is pretty unique in that I think what like uh, um, branches has a similar UI where you have a drop down and you have navigate instead of a list view and there's paginated, right? Like that's sort of like the two paradigms. And so with this drop down paradigm, I think only boards and branches, because I, I thought about this and asked people, um, are the only two places that have this. So I think it's a good change overall, but it is, let's at least use like the next week to think about it. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll put that in 11.5 and then kick out the recent. Okay, cool, thank you. Awesome. Uh, I'll just highlight that Constance posted on the chat saying that you can have automatic filtering for free. So that's good. Thank you, Constance. Uh, instead of recent. Next, next point is Annabelle, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So I wanted to let people know or show people the initial thoughts or designs for sub epics, which is kind of now renamed epic relationships because sub epics doesn't actually make that much sense. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Cool, so initially we were thinking of just kind of copying what we already have for subgroups. Um, in that you know you've got the carrot and you just expand it and you just keep expanding and you'll keep seeing new sub issues sub epics or actually this is focused on sub epics so forget sub issues the initial design i was thinking um we were trying to to start with like a really a pyramid basically so you've got your your main overhead epic and then that can be split into two more epics or however many and then each one of those can have unlimited um, epics within um, so you've got kind of, if you pick an epic right in the middle of that pyramid, it can go up and down. So the parents can only ever be one parent at a time. You can't have multiple parents in this, um, in this design. So that could go on the sidebar, which is right here. Um, what I don't like about this is the title is, uh, oops, the title is uh, duplicated, which we can, we can fix later. But in this, in this example, the immediate parent is this one, and then the immediate parent of that is that, and that's where it terminates, basically. Um, and then to go the opposite way, you're going to see the epics here, where you would normally see the current issues in an epic. Um, here is the really unattractive design in Balsamic, and then uh, we got some feedback from Yob that it took up a little bit too much vertical space. So uh, going from the, the new design of the related issues, they don't take up as much space as, as the current version, which is good, I guess. But I was thinking that we could sort of start grouping them by this gray background, which will just switch between the two colors, um, depending on where you are in the tree. Um, the default view will always be collapsed just like um, a discussion or subgroups. Um, and then you expand one at a time and you'll eventually see the entire tree going down. So these are only the descendants again. Um, my question actually for this is, because this isn't going to work really if it does act like subgroups. So for an example, I don't know how these are implemented, but if you click on a group to see the descendant groups, it takes forever and sometimes it doesn't load in this case it's not even loading uh this one i think loads i tried it earlier right so that's because it only has one subgroup so andre do you know if this is a front end problem or back end or what because it, well, if that's going to happen we can't do this no i so one um from this perspective that i i don't know this code base so i would have to look into it but it looks that something's happening, whether that request failed, the Mark Cesario one, 
but the front end seems to be working, but something's wrong for sure. Yeah. Uh, regardless of what it is, I wouldn't see this as a blocker for what yeah, we want to do there. Fission block design, we should be able to do better. Than absolutely, absolutely. So I, 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 my message to you is don't see this as a blocker, continue, because uh, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, we just have, because you're not, if we're talking about real-time updates, we have to check how quickly we could do that, which we're going to talk about. But this is just listing relationships. Right. We should be able to do this pretty fast. We either, and we can either load this right away because it's not that much of a data. Yeah. Uh, Nest does a lot of complex queries that I don't expect because we have in the database, you'd have a direct relationship, right? You don't have to go. So one of the issues with the boards is that you're going to have to search issues that have a certain label. So that query is mm -hmm. okay. uh, heavier than just like direct relationships. So I don't expect to be there any, any bottleneck on the back end. Unless they have a thousand groups and uh, epics and sub epics, but that's never usually a use case. I think. Right. And we were thinking, well, I had this idea that we should be restricting them and sort of following a more strict uh, mm -hmm. level of, of, you know, we could only go four deep or something. But for now, I think we're just going limited and leaving it up to the user to be, to use their best judgment and not go crazy. Um, the other question I had was, was dragging a sub epic from one level into another. Um, the gray background was supposed to denote like, here's this grouping, and then you can reorder within this, this gray background. But I think it makes sense to be able to drag one epic from this level into another level if you messed up or something. Um, so I like the idea that within this, you could just drag this and then it would, it would pop up to the next level as well. That could be in a future iteration. I don't know what um, the immediate ask is, but that was just another idea. Yeah, yeah that uh, I'll just comment. Well, that's that's like an amazing design that I think like a lot of customers would find super super compelling. Um, and you know, you're totally right to design it now, and but also to comment that like there's no way we can build that in maybe even like the first four or five iterations. <laughs> but um, just having that uh, aware of that design up front is, is precisely what we need in my exercise. So I appreciate that. Okay, cool. And then, and we should definitely, sorry, I know I'll just in that point, we should definitely double check that they want to move the epic, like have a dialogue or. Yeah, or definitely. You don't want right. to, I was thinking you could just rearrange and then maybe there'd be like a save button when you're finished. I don't know. I'm not a project uh, manager, so I don't know how much you really rearrange. Uh, Victor, you probably know more. No, yeah, I, I, I would, I would disagree, Andrew, with um, having a dialogue. Because if you okay. move, then you can just move. If it's easy, then you can just move back. Um, but yeah, no, I, I definitely defer to, to further okay. conversation. That's, that's not a strict, okay. like that's a terrible idea. I, I don't think sure. it's, I think it's uh, reasonable. Like I, I, right now when I move stuff around in boards and related issues, I create a couple of issues to fix some bugs as well. So I don't know if it's because the bugs are letting me be uncomfortable with that interaction. Uh, I find that interaction very intuitive. I like that design, but the one feedback I have with that is that it's it's almost too easy. So when you have the dialogue, Andre, it makes sense to me. That resonates with me because then it's giving you confirmation that you changed something. So I wouldn't necessarily make it add friction, but maybe more feedback. Like I, I, I thought in my brain on a weekend, but I didn't create the issue. Like. Maybe you have like a little hover thing that pops up and says like change a save or something like that. So I, I don't know if that's important or not, but that's and, definitely the future. And then an undo link. <laughs> oh yeah, like, well, no, that's the thing with undo, like these types of things, like why, why would you need to undo if you can just as easily drag it back? Right, so well, because one thing I forgot to put in here were the X buttons. So if you combine those two things, if you start deleting things and then you realize, that, oops, yep, I, I agree with that. Yeah. So, it could just be combined like Xing or removing them and shifting them around it could be one sort of, you made some changes. Is this what you want to do? Or I don't know. That's true. That's true. So go ahead. Pedro. So uh, my question is um, now thinking specifically about the uh, issue uh, relationships and how this relates to epic relationships. Uh, what uh, kind of issue relationships would be, be supporting just ch child parents or anything else i think in this view only child parent could be <laughs> like if we show blocking well well the issue relationships that i know of that uh, at least that are in my brain are blocking uh mm -hmm. child parent and related issues right which you have so, right now and so like i 
I can't think of a way to express blocking and sub uh, and and related here. Yeah. So what what I was thinking is, um, do we do we need to show? Um, so in this, like issues will always be at the same level. So for example, if I'm putting two issues and saying, oh, these two issues are related, or this issue is blocking that other issue, or uh, they are still at uh, the system level, they are at the same level, right? Even, uh, but if I say that an issue is actually a parent of another issue, or if an epic is a parent of another epic, uh, they are still at the same level, but at the system level, but conceptually, they are now child parents. So one is beneath the other. Right. Um, so what I'm thinking is, wouldn't it be easier for us to start with just one level of um, child parents and, and not think about further children inside of the parent or for further uh, levels of the tree? And my second question is, uh, could we have a way for you to quickly switch. So if, if I add a related epic or a related issue, can I quickly switch the type of relationship? And then like have a drop down there that you change. Oh, this one is actually not only not a related issue. Uh, this is, well, this is a related issue, but it's a parent or this is a related issue, but it's a child. Or you know what I mean? Yeah, no, that, that's, a, that's, that's a pretty interesting one. And I, I think a little bit out of scope of here, but um, pretty super relevant because like it, to me, that's, yeah, no, that's like you have at least three relationships and there's like, they're like essentially arrows in my brain, like directed arrows, but most people probably don't think about them like that. So how do you present that on an, I, I would assume you would do that manipulation on an issue screen itself. And not yeah. on six screens. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that that's related here, and, and something good to think about, and maybe even design out as part of this exercise. But but at least for the purpose of this, um, whatever um, Annabelle has designed already, I think like if once we have parent-child issues, the natural design that Annabelle had is that you just keep going deeper, and then if you're looking at any parent, whether that is an epic object or an issue object. You get, a, you get the same UI, which is you just get a tree rooted at your certain object and in computer science trees grow upside down. As my computer science teacher taught me many years ago, which I never thought about, but it's true. Also family trees grow upside down, but then they just, you just see them going downward and then that's the consistent design. I think that's great. But yeah, what, you what I'm related and then push them in. I, I don't yeah, know. I was definitely thinking vertical. Uh, I didn't actually consider going horizontal like in this diagram. If you're looking at, like, on the far left, you got flexible work, breakdown structure with mm. sub-epics. I was thinking just going up and down because polished sub-epics is, it's a sibling, but it's not, you can always click to the parent to see the children, all of the children, was what I was thinking. Um, eventually, maybe we could do some sort of, like, see the whole tree, and it would show this explosion, right. of all of them, but that would be not fun to build. Um, but it would be really well, useful, probably. Well, but we do have this, right? Like, if you wanted to see what you show on the screen, you just have to keep going to your parent nodes. But you can't yeah. see the siblings, right? You can't see siblings, you're right, but, uh, of yourself. But if you want to see your sibling of yourself, you just go to your parents. Right. You go to your parent, yeah. Which you have, which you didn't talk about yet, but it's like the, the sidebar thing that you designed, which is awesome. You would be able to do that. Um, so maybe there's some extension in design to indicate that you have a sibling, but I, I would think that's overkill. Like I would make the user, like if you want to know if you have a sibling or not, just click on your parent and then you see it from there. Yeah. Right? Because that, that seems crazy to design that complexity into it. I must yeah. say that from the front end perspective, vertical that you were saying Annabelle really works great for adapting for smaller screens. So right. that's good. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking if we have to um, if we have to cross if it's now it's the time for us to cross this bridge of like showing even the issues inside of a sub epic. So basically, have such a comprehensive view of all of the children and all of the parents and all of the issues inside of the 
parents and children. So can't we just like make it a bit dumb in the beginning and you go like if you want to see the all of the parents, you go up the parent tree, like click in the parent and then another parent. Do we yeah, yeah, yeah. necessarily have to like build and, and even the children, do you I'm, I'm thinking about the use cases of you being in a child epic and then having to go like two or three levels really fast to the parent epic, like to the topmost, uh, so, and the so, same thing, right, uh, down. So, so Pedro, when I look at what Annabelle is showing on the screen there, to me that's like, that's more than enough. That's going to be like 95% of the use cases. And then there's going to be like strange 5% of users who are going to be asking maybe more actually users asking really ridiculous things like show my siblings. Um, and then we would like not do it unless it's like a really compelling reason. So are you saying that what you see on the screen is, is too much? Is that what you're saying? Or are you yeah, I'm asking if we about, need this right now. I think we need it eventually. I think like this is like, this is super compelling. It's, it's a really good use case to be able to see the entire tree um, wherever you are, assuming you're the root. Um, definitely we can't build it all in one shot, but I think it should be, it should be a clear goal and something that we build toward uh, is right. my answer. Especially in implementing this, it would be very useful for us to have that visibility so we can right. eventually plan to load each level asynchronously, which will have a sort of a, a loading thing, but might be worth thinking of that right from the start. Mm -hmm. And personally, I can tell you that when I saw it initially when Annabelle was presenting it earlier today, I felt really great and useful to see the issues, down to the issues. Yeah, to the leaf nodes, essentially. Really compelling. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, there's a bazillion use cases, Pedro, but, like, product people want epics and, and sub-epics so that you can track stuff, like initiatives, like the original, or not the original, the graphic that Annabelle had and on the other page showing the, the taxonomy or whatever you call it. And then engineer, like uh, Andre and Sean want sub issues for, well, I, I don't think they said they want, but I think it solves well the one product issue and then it's subbed by two implementation issues front end and back end. So that's yet another use case. And then, and then like a, a product manager, a designer can see that from the Epic level, from the Epic, they see, you know, five product issues and then immediately you, you click or you see right away those are further leaf node by front end issues and back end issues. So I think just myself, there's like at least two or three use cases there. And then um, customers have been asking for th these crazy roll ups as, as a thing, spanning like four or five levels, um, re essentially reflecting their org structure as well, if you think about it. Yeah, so all of this looks really good to me. Um, yeah, so so I'm, uh, if there's no more comments, um, I think we can definitely start building this, like, I mean, the, depending on capacity. But um, if there's anything, if there's nothing else from this design, Annabelle, um, that you had further thoughts on, to me, the next area there that would be relevant would be um, the roadmap view, which is going to be really crazy. Um, is that in the Epic or did you even um, think about it at all? It's probably not in that epic, right? Uh, I don't know if it's in that epic, but no, I haven't. Yeah, so it's totally fair that you didn't think about it at all. But do you agree that that's something to, oh, no, it is in the last issue there in the epic. So um, do you agree that it's something to look at next? Or did, did you have plans to, you wanted to detail more additional things on that tree view or, or stuff like that? I'm going to have to look at it. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Okay. Um, um, but if anyone has any more comments or anything, I linked to the issue in the in the doc. So please comment. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Like as far as I'm concerned, the design is amazing, and like we can build the very first thing. And the very first thing would be like what Pedro might have been alluding to earlier, which is the way I see building the very first thing is that essentially the design would not change with the existing thing. Right now, you have a, a inside an epic. You have like a window with issues and you have five of them you, you'll just be able to add epics there right so to me that's the first iteration you just see your immediate children and that's it and then that's and then but but right yeah. when we do that when we do that we will say like in our blog post we invented like sub epics or whatever we call it 
which like product marketing I think, is cringe at yeah. us. Oh, can we talk about this later? But we never do. We talk about what we have right away. So we'll, we'll figure that out later. But um, but my point being is like the very like the 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 quote unquote well like the first hard part I would see is the back end making that possible, and then the rest of the hard part is is the crazy front end logic to make more like see more stuff on one page. But like back end, I presume you do it once and then you just keep reusing that that yeah relationship. Right? relationship. Yeah, so so the, the first part will be back end heavy, but then the rest of like the five, six iterations will all be hardcore front end. Yeah, but I agree with that the first step would be important to be like the first stone of a very important revolution. Yeah. So <laughs> which is why we need the, the entire design up front, which uh, perfect. Yeah, I agree. All right. Pedro, any other points before we give uh, thirteen minutes to to Andre? No, no, I'll I'll comment to, on the issue. Awesome. Okay, can I take my next point? Yes, please. Right, so charts. So uh, I don't know if everyone is aware, uh, most of you are, I think, that the opportunity of reusing Maltano's chart library came up. And um, we had a call with, with Jacob and he showed what he, what he had. He passed me the repo that he had already started um, working on a, few, on, a, on a few charts. And then I went back to my little cave with my front end managers and we, we took a, took it a little bit apart and we, we talked a little bit more. And there are, there are several questions here. One is the kind of graphs that we are gonna need to build for the GitLab product as a whole are not entirely visible. We, are, we have good visibility on the plan side, so thanks, Victor. I, I passed that along to them already, so that was part of the discussion. The kind of maps, that, the kind of graphs that we are foreseeing and having in the plan side, um, in portfolio management as well but we don't have much visibility on other product areas, specifically monitoring and that kind of thing, which might be very useful. So our initial uh, strategy is I'm preparing a document that I will be passing along to all product managers of all areas to fill in with forecasts of graphs that they're thinking of getting, not high res, but just like right, thinking right. of mock-ups concepts. Mm -hmm. And that will give us a hint. And then we'll, we'll um, also get it through UX to have more of an interaction information, whether they'll be very interactive, not very interactive, um, which will then give us more of a notion how to build and which library to use. Right now, we are leaning towards D3 just because there, there's a lot more complexity, sorry, there's a lot more knowledge in the team, but also it allows for more customization from what we've seen than charts. Chart might be easier to use, it might be simpler, um, but D3 has a little bit more power in, the, in customization. So we are leaning towards that end. The other part that we want is we want to have, and Mac also highlighted this point, we want to have this from the get-go with very high quality standards. So testing will play a very big part eventually, in including visual diffing, which all of these points, including documentation and spreading the word and everything, is the GitLab UI mission. So there's a very big alignment in that part. So what we're thinking that we could basically um, get to bridge with one stone is that um, charts could be a category inside GitLab UI. We'll piggyback on all the effort that we've been doing that in that side, and we'll move everything along um, with wrapped components that will provide kinds of graphs that they only need to be fed data. And this will be documented, this will be tested visually as well uh, using the GitLab infrastructure. We consider splitting it all up, but for now we're just going all all in with the GitLab UI. But all of this is depending on that exploration part that we're um, going to trigger. So I have the document already ready with the plan issues. I might have forgotten a few things, so I'm going to link it uh, after this. I'm going to link it here, and I'm going to ping you, Victor, just to make sure that I didn't forget any important charts. And after that, I'm going to prepare sort of a call for comments for all product managers. I might put it on a company call and, and then spread it around on the product channel so that we get, like, within a week or so, we get feedback from all product areas. Uh, we forecasted charts, and after that, we'll be in a position to start uh, making decisions in how we're going to build this and which library we're going to use. Now, having said that, I don't think we should stop product development of any charts. That's why when I when you ping me earlier on Slack, I do think we can get that into 11.5, just because that's a regular chart as we've been doing so far. Once we get the new components charts in GitLab UI, all we have to do is go back to this and 
to all of the charts and re-update and update them to use the new the new components. So I don't think we should stop product development, but we are going to make an effort of pushing the, the, this forward in parallel. If we have like the burn down or the burn up charts, which are significantly harder to implement, we might consider those for the GitLab UI charts. But for this kind of charts that we already have, like the bars charts that we already have, we can just go ahead and, and start working on them as we usually did until now. And there won't be too much of a wasted effort in setting things up uh, just because everything is set up already with the D, D3. Um, okay. So I think I covered all of the grounds. Uh, any questions, any comments on that? Yeah, so you said burn up charts you said was was weird just wanted to catch that i was wondering why that yeah, i remember was. that was I, i'm not sure what you call it in particular um but you had a an example mock-up in right. in boston like, or something of um a burn down but it was going up i'm not entirely sure if that it's is like a stacked thing right yeah so I'll, I'll, burned I'll, down I'll over. it's it's such a it's essentially a stack chart but like i i just shared that because it was interesting mm -hmm. as a feature but it's also interesting because yeah um uh with a stacked it's both stacked and not stacked so that's why i found that interesting i wanted to share it and just like if it were mm -hmm. i don't think it should be difficult but in, i don't know but basically with a stack chart any type of stack bar chart or um so yeah it's a stacked there, there's bar charts which are individual bars and then there's lot so this is a stacked line chart sorry not a stacked bar chart and with stacked line charts, what you have is you have a line and then the diff is the next value. So it, it stacks on top of it and then so on and so forth, right? And so the, the, the value of each series, you're, you're adding it as a diff on top. And so that's one way to do quote unquote stack lines. Another way to visualize it is you have a line which is this and then you have another value, but it's not the diff on top of it, it's the actual value. So then you can have two parallel lines, but it's not that. And then so the, the visualization that I was showing or the feature had, it's combining both at the same time. So like N minus one of them are the diffs, and then the last one is the total. And so okay. that to me, that's like just an interesting feature. I'm like, oh, that's a, like, a, it's like a weird edge case where like maybe some libraries where you say, oh, I want this particular chart and here's my, series of data like one of them is like weird so that's all right. i wanted to mention so and that's a very good example of, of stuff that we need heavy customization on exactly. that my I, I will admit that my experience on d3 is limited but i passed it on to tim and i, I showed him okay. that graph and everything's been visible I, I just posted the link on the document of today's agenda so if, if you want to have a look of the graphs that i've identified awesome. there could be some missing on the plan side i just did a little um okay like quick overview uh, and this is the the document i'll prepare the soccer around this is great. soccer around product management product managers this is awesome do, do, does that sound good do you do you mind if i add to this uh no that's why i'm i made okay. added abilities so that you can edit and that's going to go around with all the product managers so okay. you have a bit of a head, head start <laughs> from them but uh but thank you thank you for having such a um i, th I have to, to give you credit for having such a long running forecast of, of stuff for yeah. client because it really helps grasp the, the needs and you can make a, a more educated guess awesome on, so, on the library. Um, yeah please go ahead and and ping all the pms i will definitely put that. this on the product meeting agenda uh, we have on tuesdays as well so that will give them yeah, perfect. Two, two points of like annoying them to like do this i plan thing. to do this um at latest tomorrow uh, i'll be starting the message tomorrow and then, so looping back to your original point, so so does this mean we are not using Meltano? That that has yeah. already been decided. I, chat, I, I chatted with Jacob earlier today, and uh, yeah, the, the idea is that we're not using Meltano um, at this point, and just because there's a, a difference in 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 goals, and and also I think it, it might be even better because we we won't hinder their evolution; they can evolve in their own way. If they, if there was a lot of similar points. Uh, it would be beneficial. So that was a definitely a good point of raising that possibility. Okay. We just didn't see that in the code um, as it is now in our own assumptions of the graphs that we're going to be building. So to be absolutely sure, that's why we want to do this round of requests for comments to okay. make sure that we're aligned with, with the product needs and then we'll be free to build whatever we want. Um, awesome. But we didn't, we didn't feel like there would be a lot of benefit 
uh, are reusing that and they can do the charts that they want. Eventually they might even, if, if it gets to that, they might reuse our part or we might even reuse theirs if you get to that. But at this yeah. point, I don't see that, that happening. Okay. Uh, because we want, oh, and also another thing is that we will be looking to put people assigned to this part that have experience on D3. That hasn't been uh, completely decided if we're going to get exclusive people assigned to this. But it will be part of a team to be responsible for this part. Um, but that is to be decided on how exclusive that will be. But um, it makes everything easier to just like gravitate everyone towards this effort of putting GitLab UI as a center of reusable components for GitLab. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I, I look forward to it. So you said we. I, I think there's like one chart in eleven five. You want to take that out right now, right? I think that I don't want to take that out. I think that we can still carry okay. that out. Okay. So the you, bar, you the bar charts. It's we already have that in other parts of the product. Okay. It's basically to be light on front end. That's going to be basically just preparing the data and okay. putting the data at what we already have. Okay. So so you mean like this exercise? You don't want this to drag on. You you think like you're you're. Oh no no. From, okay. We no, definitely no, want to we definitely want to start this as soon as possible. What I don't think we should do is stop development of product unless it's complicated graphs. If it's complicated graphs. So for instance, the value stream management might be worth being one of the first ones on this GitLab UI right, thing. Right, right, right. Um, but this simple graph charts that we already have, I don't yeah. think it's worth stopping because later when we add this to the GitLab UI, we just go back and change it and restart using the new one. Perfect. Yeah. The, 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 from a back end perspective, I definitely think the, the quality team one where it just sucks in issues and counts them, that's probably one of the easiest. When the VSM one is probably a little bit harder. So I'll leave that one in right now, which is the, 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 the quality, the one that the quality is wants. Yeah. So I'll leave that issue in 11.5 and then, and then we'll go. Okay, okay so two minutes left. Um, uh, Real time board lists. So I just wanted to quickly say that oh, yeah. um, for, e, for the charts, uh, I'm, I'm planning to have the, uh, and I think, yeah, uh, Sarah is also on board with this to have Amelia. Uh, work on uh, the pattern library for for charts and everything that we're going to do with charts in, in GitLab. We already have a lot of the groundwork and that's essentially what uh, probably you have already linked in that document and that other product managers are going to link to. Uh, but we have an issue uh, that I'll put in this um, uh, agenda uh, when okay. I'm at the computer. It's a, an issue for our pattern library and uh, I, don't th I don't think it's already assigned to Amelia, but essentially what she's going to do is exactly what you're saying you're going to do for the front end side. She's going to do that for uh, the design side of things. And, and I mean, they're, all, they're married, right? So it, everything must make sense. You're going to look at if it's going to have interactivity, she's going to look into that as well so that we have the guidelines from the design side of things. So user experience wise, she'll be the go-to person. Uh, okay. And, uh, I mean, it sounds like you'll be the go-to person for the front-end side of things. So you have to be, yeah. What, what I'm trying to say is that you have to be aligned on this so that there are, the expectations are... I will, I will sync up with her yeah. before sending the message because I want her to be on, on board with this and, and not duplicate effort because she might be thinking of being yes. part of managers as well. Yes, 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 exactly. So yeah, that, I told her that not necessarily to ping product managers, but to tackle that issue we needed a comprehensive view of what we already have, okay. what we're I'll planning to do. Tomorrow. Exactly what you're, what you're saying you're going to do for the front-end side. Uh, that uh, knowledge is, is uh, cross. Okay, perfect. I'll sync up with her. Okay, so uh, time's up. Uh, Andre, I okay. will ping you on that uh, epic. I wanted to get your take on it, but it's not urgent at all. So if you don't and get I can, it. I can go through the, through the epic and comment there. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Okay, bye.